I put my hand in and slice my hand open, going around pumping blood, and I ended up with like a tampon wrapped up in like duct tape. It was a good way to break the ice. Yeah. This is Tom Moore here. Tom Moore. Tom Moore. Master of the animation universe. Excellent artist. The secret of Kells. Fun to see. Wolf walkers. I remember my mum telling me that I was kind of easier to live with if I spent a few hours drawing. It's almost like driving now for me, drawing. Like very realistic oil painting that's absolutely precise of what you have in your mind doesn't let give the viewer much scope. It's a bit like live action. I think they're a bit dead ends. As my career goes on, I'm less and less interested in the spit and polish. Hand-drawn is a better explanation of the kind of work that I'm interested in. That's what I like about drawing, the incompleteness of it. It invites a lot of filling in. It's kind of fascinating how much we fill in. Did you feel at all intimidated when you started that class? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Do I kind of drew the same way for a long time and I was conscious I'd been drawing the same way for a long time. No, I know there's something going on in your mind that's a bit like stable diffusion. You know these Pinterest boards of all your inspirations? That is a little bit like the training model thing. Like, I remember coming across them and realising I'd been doing it informally with yeah. like, the books I prefer, the artists yeah. I prefer and all. But actually a style is quite a fluid thing because mm. it's you. You know what I mean? Like my yeah, style yeah. is often defined by my limitations and I'm always pushing against my limitations. So my style naturally evolves. And so this idea of finding your style, I think you should just forget about that and focus on. Hey, this is an exciting episode for me because I get to travel. <laughs> We're going down for a little road trip all the way down to one of my favorite places in Ireland, Kilkenny. <laughs> Everybody I talked to on Zoom, I drew. They put up some of the drawings, but I did many more. <laughs> like, <laughs> I started training with Carl Ganass online, and he told me to get a skeleton. So this was, this is a cast. Yeah. I think of some Chinese woman, you know, I don't Whoa. know. But it's a cast. Yeah. So it's not, it's not real bones. Well, I mean, <laughs> so we know. I'm not just put her here. I bring her up. Yeah. I want to really pick your brain about drawing. Is drawing an essential skill for animation? Just today, I got Tony White's book, and he was Richard Williams' assistant. And yeah. we, we've contributed some images for it, you know? Wow. It was interesting that he said something like, it's not like classical animation isn't the only way to learn animation, mm -hmm. but he thinks it's the best way. Yeah. And I don't know, but I feel like, for me, it's foundational. Uh -huh. And I can't see how it could be bad. To start with drawing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, I imagine it must be possible in the world of AI and sophisticated mm. software that you can produce stuff without being able to draw now, yeah. which I guess is liberating. Mm. But for me, the, I think the reason to work in animation has been to draw. You know, like, okay, it's so yeah. fundamental to me. Yeah. That, yeah, I always call it essential. It's essential if you want to work in cartoons. Lingo. <laughs> that rules me out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, drawing, as I'm sure we'll discuss as part of this, you know, it's really a, a process of discovery, you know. Um, and one question that I always find interesting to ask people is, is it more satisfying to you to get the pencil to move where you want it to or to follow the flow of your... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. There's no... I don't have one... I have different modes. Uh, and... Um, it's very arc it's almost like driving now for me drawing wow. like i wow. i kind of do it and i think about almost other stuff you yeah. know often for me drawing is a meditative process yeah i remember my mom telling me that i was kind of easier to live with if i spent a few hours drawing my wife tells me the same thing <laughs> so yeah I, I for me it's a it's about processing mm -hmm. and sometimes i sit down and take a line for a walk for sure just for fun Definitely if I'm designing, okay. it's a different mode than drawing. Yeah. Like there's observational drawing, which I find very meditative. And that's like, I guess I'm training the model <laughs> in the terms of AI, which I'm a bit obsessed about. Oh, like I'm putting more in, more and more in. But ah, I'm your uh, internal AI. Yeah, yeah. my internal, my, yeah. my, my artificial, your artificial My um, artificial intelligence, yeah. yeah. Um, but th that's what observational drawing is for me. Mm -hmm. So if it has any function, it's, it's that. Um, because then when you're creating stuff from your imagination, you have a bigger 
database but designing is different drawing for design is a different process it's a very it's more iterative yeah uh refining process uh-huh. and that's very different yeah so you think it's a different different strokes for different folks basically. well they feed yeah. each other yeah you know and the people i'm more and more interested in now in my journey are people like joanna queen mm-hmm. who seems to have a, a shorter distance between her life drawing practice and her animation practice than i would have wow. yeah like yeah. my character design and my approach to animation was very about celebrating 2d and mm-hmm. design and stuff yeah. doing 2d and then my observational drawing was more academic it was more like literally learning to draw what was in front of me accurately yeah. and uh, structure and anatomy and all of that and then kind of trying to marry the two more and more yeah bring some of my observation drawing into my animation practice is probably the next step for me but until now i have to admit that i was very interested in design almost as a formal practice mm-hmm. and uh and, and uh uh, there was a, a structure to it and a lot of visual language to it yeah. and then observational drawing was more jazz you know it was just see what happens you know oh, it was okay. much freer yeah there's something you said there I really love which is this idea of taking a line for a while oh yeah it's not my quote but someone said yeah. it yeah. Good. Yeah. someone said it can you talk me through what that means to you well that's a different thing yeah that's that's drawing almost as a yeah as a pure exploration without any end point or output yeah. mind at all without any goal at all and that that's very interesting that's very therapeutic as well yeah. um what's interesting is you find that your lines can become a little bit like overtrained, and I, sometimes i sit down to take a line for a walk and i find myself drawing a very familiar looking character yeah and so i gave myself like a, a boundary a challenge yeah. during my sabbatical mm-hmm. and my focus on life drawing i wasn't on cartoons anymore and apart from like a caricature for someone's wedding and maybe one or two things for fans. I yeah. didn't draw any cartoon characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just drew, and that was all taking a line for a walk. Then, because that was just no output, just yeah. organically following what was in front of me and learning and learning and learning. Mm-hmm. I absolutely loved it. Um, and now I'm back. I'm discovering how do I bring that, bring that into, into my work. animation work? Yeah, wow, yeah, because that's something that a lot of people love. And I know we've talked about it before. You know, something like the tale of the Princess Kaguya. Yes, you have that perfect line that goes through it but then we see that evolution move into what inspired you guys in wolf walkers yeah you know, with oh yeah i yeah you know, the kind of wilder characters and now you're talking about your freehand drawing i don't know how else to describe it you're just being so free in your expression that's where i think i'm going to go and i think probably by osmosis the studio to some extent will go we talked about it a lot. Like, it's not all up to me. I'm not the only director in yeah. the studio, and someone yeah. might want to do something different, but I feel like when I look at Kells, and now kind of form, is this okay? Uh, we can, like, yeah, keep going. There's a bin man right there, yeah. yeah. So when yeah, I look the at the, the Secret of Kells, like, yeah. characters were very, uh, yeah, formal, and looking at medieval art, and, like, very designy. Uh-huh. And then... I'm going to stop. Hilarious. <laughs> Use AI to clean it up. <laughs> you can, yeah. AI you is incredible. You know, I, I was playing around with the different, you know, uh, things and just the output was astounding. Now, I know obviously the ethical issues are out. Yeah, but they uh, sound solvable, right? Yes, um, exactly. And if I was to train in AI on yeah. everything we'd ever done, it would be an interesting tool. I'm super curious to see AI machine learning process playing it as an artist yeah actually from point to point like they're the most interesting things for me when i look at ai is how it solves things outside of human input yeah it's what's really interesting is the yeah. final output is pretty impressive yeah. but it's more like um developing a polaroid or something than drawing to me no i know there's something going on in your mind that's a bit like stable diffusion where you're yeah. you've got your catalog of of stuff that you've learned your all your life and your influences but there's definitely more randomness and discovery mm-hmm. in the best drawing i mean there's a lot of commercial art that is literally you know taking all the references and turning them out in a way that satisfies the client and i think ai is going to eat deep eat into that them, world yeah. but yeah people that are like and it, my wife is a ceramicist yeah. and she runs a ceramic studio and i often think that it's been a long time that the ceramics she makes could have been designed in maya and printed with a 3d printer but people are buying her work because she made it yeah and then she runs classes yeah when people do the classes and i think the pe- people who do the classes probably buy her work with a different appreciation yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's not just the output you know and there's definitely some meditative about ceramics yeah. 
I haven't really done much of it, but like I can see that it's a very you know, tactile. Yes, present, present experience. So I think yeah. on the process side and on the look and feel side, the studio is going to, I am at least, to yeah. speak for myself, I am interested in exploring the opposite of, of, of that stable diffusion approach and yeah. trying to do the, make a virtue of the hand drawn this other You know, that's a great phrase I've heard and it's come up in our conversations a few times, the virtue of hand drawn. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, pull that apart but what do you mean by that i started to purposely use it as a 2d which sounds a bit yeah like a less than thing if yeah. something's 2d yeah. you know step down yeah and after all everything's 2d on the screen unless you're wearing those glasses but like basically it's not 2d and i have made a choice to really explore the 2d designiness mm -hmm. of drawn drawing but hand drawn is a better explanation of the kind of work that i'm interested in yeah and it definitely has an entertainment value like rough and ready stop motion has it too. Yes. Yeah. Like super polished stop motion and super polished 2D mm -hmm. has a beauty to it. I think of like, I think of Klaus. But they're also on the edge of people going, is it hand drawn? Is it hand yeah. stop motion? Is it CG? Whereas the Kaguya, mm -hmm. and Joanna Quinn, that stuff, and, and Ardmani, plasticine stuff, yeah. has a different beauty that's mm -hmm. about the process, about how yeah. it's made. Mm -hmm. The artist's hand is on screen, essentially. Yeah. yeah. More so. I mean, obviously, yeah. the artist's hand is on screen and the like stuff, and, you know, obviously. Yeah. And they're beautiful and magnificent. And they absolutely no bones to pick with. I, I love that stuff. I don't want to, like, go on record saying anything <laughs> bad about them, but I, I well, define too myself. late. We got them, guys. I probably define myself yeah. a little bit in opposition to that now. As my career goes on, I'm less and less interested in the spit and polish. Yeah. I'm more and more interested in the greasy thumbprints and the eraser marks and yeah. all of that stuff. What prompted you to start drawing people on scene? Like, what was the... Barton was like, prison, you know, you have to do something. <laughs> like, I was in this, like, little room. I honestly, I had my weights and I had a <laughs> sketch pad. You know? I, I, you know, I've always drawn people in meetings. Okay, uh, yeah. It's always been my thing. I don't... Mm -hmm. I think I plateaued for a long time. I kind of drew the same way for a long time and I was conscious I'd been drawing the same way for a long time. And so I booked in for years mm -hmm. in my mind that I was going back to college yeah, yeah. to study just pure anatomical life drawing. And do you think that like stepping outside your environment to push yourself in, because you went to college in France, right? Is that what you, yeah, yeah. The, I went, I studied in the Ecole de Beaux-Arts and then I went and studied with Raymond Hussman, who's yeah. a, a, a classical Dutch painter in Amsterdam. Okay. So I, I did a, I did four months stints in both of those yeah. places. Yeah. And do you think that change of environment really pushed you artistically then? Well, yeah, and even as a person, and it was like, I mean, it certainly wasn't the, the college experience that I didn't have as a young man, of course, and I was just a, like a middle-aged dude. Yeah. But uh, the the prior to that, which was interesting, like yeah. you asked about drawing on Zoom, I always drew people in meetings. Yeah. And I was doing these classes with Carl Ganass online mm -hmm. as a way to kind of placate myself, knowing that I was endlessly delaying my sabbatical because of the model. Yeah. And so just kind of the stuff I was learning with Carl, the life drawing, I was doing online life drawing, which is crazy. I started with a projector trying to make the model about the scale of a, of a human using yeah. a projector. Yeah. And then after a while I was just using the screen. And at the start I was like, and I remember I said to Pete Doctor that I was doing that. And, uh, and he was like, oh really, can you do that? And, and I could understand the skepticism because it is way better with a live model. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I learned a lot that way. Yeah. And because I was drawing from a screen, a model, and honestly, some of the Zoom calls I was on, there was a model on the second screen. And I was drawing the new model, and they didn't know. <laughs> really, put the camera there. Yeah. Okay. Like I was looking at them, and um, all the tricks of of, of of Zoom time, you know. But uh, yeah, so it was very natural. <laughs> if I was drawing a model on the screen, and I drawn someone who was talking to it. It was the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you gave yourself an excuse, basically. If they're like, "What are you drawing to me?" You show them. You, yeah, yeah, they always loved that. Oh, yeah, yeah, people always loved that. People still love that little trick. But yeah, it was. It maybe looked like I was constantly taking notes or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of interviews, a lot of yeah. annotation in the junket. kit. And usually, yeah. I was saying to Ross, it was his first time on the junket. Yeah. And I said to Ross, usually that's mitigated by the fact that you're in a hotel in a different city, and you might go for drinks afterwards. And yeah. you know, but this was just in our spare room. Yeah, <laughs> but fuck it. <laughs> You added some tattoos as well, did you? I, during the pandemic, I got one major piece. Yeah, that yeah. I've been planning for a long time. Yeah, and high society next door here. Yeah. Wow, great studio. Yeah, <laughs> right next door because we're on yeah. Eric Street here. Yeah, I remember I booked a life drawing class years ago. I was working in Sky at the time, and I was like, okay, now is my time to just get get the pencil, start going. And I remember I, it was in Rat Mines. I walked to the 
clock tower that's there and was in underneath mm-hmm. that. Beautiful. I had my pad, pencils ready. We're sitting there, all everyone looking at each other. And then the guy comes in and says, oh, the life drawing instructor broke her arm in the way here. And we've canceled the class indefinitely. So Aww. I was like, oh, OK. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that was it. Yeah. And I never, I don't know. I don't know if it's, I never had the courage to book again or gave myself the time to do it. And, and I feel like it's in between somewhere there. Giving yourself the time is a hard one. Like I was yeah. in the style, I was going to like drawing last night and I had to dig out some paper and pencils. Uh, from yeah. that room, my 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 <laughs> my, my, my prison cell, <laughs> and I had a weird nostalgia for those days because yeah. it was oodles of time, mm-hmm. and you weren't moving from one place to another, so you really were. Um, and then going to Paris, part of it was like I'd always wanted to study in, in the bazaar, yeah. But also, it was even a way I was getting involved in studio stuff just because Zoom had become so normal. Yeah. But having booked in those days, those mm-hmm. eight-hour days, yeah. where that's where I was and it was in. They yeah. like, like I found a hallowed hall of life drawing mm. and everything was, there was nothing distracting. There was nothing yeah. like, that's what I'd signed up to do. Um, that was really valuable. And I've discovered that as I came home because I was so sure by the time I was leaving Amsterdam feeling like I'm just starting to crack this oil painting thing. I just need to keep it up. I was so sure I'd keep painting and it's been nine months, you know, <laughs> It just shows it. Yeah, it's interesting as well. Like environment is so important for um, creating the yeah. space to make yourself. Because you just step into the environment, your head snaps into that space. That's why it's really important to segregate fitness areas to from relaxation areas. Mm-hmm. Because if you exercise beside your couch, you probably have to be on your couch. And mm-hmm. up to the time. Mm-hmm. And I know we're supposed to be talking about life drawing. <laughs> yeah. One one thing I did want to ask was. Did you feel at all intimidated when you started that class in? Yes. Yeah. I The first day, uh-huh. I was very anxious. First of all, my French isn't great. Like, I've been learning French forever. But yeah. It's still not great. And so I was listening to the lectures and stuff. But like, it was all in French. Yeah, it was in French. And then I wasn't sure. I think it's a real childish petty thing. Yeah. But I wasn't sure what standard everyone around me was. So I just presumed they were all they fucking yeah. Michelangelo, right? Yeah. So I was there drawing and sweating and really focusing on what was wrong with my stuff. Mm. And it took the teacher kind of coming and going, oh, you're not a beginner and sort of interacting with me a bit mm. to start having some confidence. And there was a couple of other people who were like me, you know, there was graphic designers and yeah. a couple of people in like, maybe like CG or something. Mm. And then a lot of retirees yeah. and then a lot of young people who were preparing their portfolio to go to college proper because it was a short life drawing block. It wasn't like a degree or anything. Yeah. And so um, I found my place in the class and I was actually pretty proficient because I'd done all that work with Carl and all. Yeah. But at the beginning, yeah, I was free and him. And it's also a very, like, it's an amazing space. It's been there for like hundreds of years. They've got like elephant bones and, you know, statue Whoa. oh they've everything yeah, it, geez. and it's like a table where they used to actually cut up dead bodies to learn anatomy that that you're looking at but there's modern like like yeah. and they have mo- yeah, bring, bring a scalpel yeah. to the model yeah. and then they have this amazing thing that i'd never seen before which are health and safety wise i don't know because you're like a fireman you climb up the ladder and then you walk along these kind of platforms above uh-huh. the model so you can draw from above looking down and it's a really wow. and it's like an amphitheater it's yeah. not a huge room but it's um it's old and it has that mm-hmm. sense of like people have been drawing here for like hundreds of years yeah yeah so the ha- and the, the buzz art college itself is you know beautiful mm-hmm. building in Paris and art school you know yeah but like most art schools you know it's just once you go in there you chaos people yeah piles of paper everywhere piles of paper and yeah. people welding and fucking you know <laughs> monumental sculptures together smoking joints yeah <laughs> of course yeah true art really yeah, yeah. So just the chaos I remember there was one day I was very proud of myself that I uh, my creativity I had to every day going in the security guard would want to see your student card and mm-hmm. I obviously didn't look like the average student but a lot of us in the course weren't average students yeah. but he always see my security guard my, and I had a blade for cutting my pens and my pencils in my bag so I put my hand in and slice my hand open yeah and that was mental and then I ended up making lots of friends because I was going around pumping blood and I ended up with like a tampon 
<laughs> wrapped up in like duct tape uh, you know yeah. was, like everyone was helping me and it was a good way to break the ice yeah. they were all like who is this poor bleeding Irish yeah. man the second day yeah. I'm yeah. surprised you didn't use your blood to draw <laughs> yeah, that would have been even more uh, yeah. and yet I started drawing with a tampon on him. <laughs> I was bound by various yeah. that's pretty hardcore to be fair <laughs> yeah that's very you know, I don't think many people have that story in their life but what did you learn in that college then that you pulled practically that you didn't you might not have known before it was continuing in Bozar it was continuing a lot of stuff I started with Carl and uh -huh. I'd set myself a, a, a kind of a, a standard because yeah. I've been very linear I've been very inspired by um, Egon Schiele okay. Gustav Klimt yeah. and people like that yeah. even Rodin's life drawing which isn't sculpture it's very linear so everything I've been doing is very linear and I even almost made wireframes by drawing around things and stuff yeah. and what I was trying to use was the side of my pencil hold my pencil like a paintbrush because my ultimate goal was to paint yeah and I was and and basically when you say that you mean at a distance yeah yeah, yeah the, back, like yeah. with a different and yeah. a different angle rather than picky and precise yeah and I, I developed a very sore shoulder working on the Cintiq for years yeah. and so I was learning to draw in a way that was more sustainable for me rather than this it was more like this so that was really good and then literal skills like literal literal like you know when to put down a, a block of tone you went go back in using different pencils and using different line weights and different shading techniques in a very 19th century classical way. I did a couple of drawings that I feel looked something close to those 19th century type drawings that were, you know, very academic. I didn't do any super long studies. I did have the ambition. There was a guy who started the studio with us here, Aiden Hart, mm -hmm. and he went off to become a sculptor, famous for the puka. And uh, he studied in Florence after he left the saloon. Yeah. And uh, he had done some of these really long drawings. I still love to do those. Like, really beautiful, but like days, days long. Yeah. I didn't do any of those, and I'd always wanted to. <laughs> but that was the thing I didn't get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing you didn't get to. You kind of ran short of time, was it? Or? No, it was like the class wasn't set up for that. It was The class was such a mixed bag. Uh -huh. There was people in there who could draw, but not many people who could draw to like a really high level so yeah. a lot of them were learning portion or yeah. base, stuff that I'd covered uh -huh. either in college with Laura or online with Carol already you know. yeah yeah that's very interesting so yeah it was 19th century classical drawing that I was working on it was, I feel like I started getting close to close to the 19th century yeah, yeah. <laughs> the older you get is it a different school of thought there in terms of drawing experience then I think what I liked about Bozar and in Amsterdam was that the people that were doing it yeah. were really into the classical stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, but we're a tiny minority. I think yeah. most people studying in it, every couple of you know, modernism, postmodernism, all of that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. But yeah, definitely my teacher, Raymond in yeah. Amsterdam, was, you know, absolute walking encyclopedia of the old wow. oil painting technique. Yeah, and yeah. You could talk, you could talk to you for hours just about how they mixed their paints and everything like that. Yeah. And there was definitely a sense of pride that this was like a Dutch tradition, this way of painting mm -hmm. is a Dutch tradition and that the artists, the Flemish artists yeah. that were fa world famous. And you can go to the Rijksmuseum yeah. and walk around and look at Rembrandt's and everything till your eyes fell out. So yeah. it definitely, that was... Like you felt in it, yeah. like you were there, yeah. but also, especially if your eyes fall out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a bit, of, uh, and it was fun. I brought my parents came to visit at one point, and it was fun. So I could show them, even what I, I could show them Rembrandt's in yeah. person and talk about the brush that he was using or how he was painting or the technique he was using, and uh, it kind of deepened their appreciation. Again, back to process. Like they weren't yeah. just looking at a picture; they were understanding that this was something special. How it was done with the tools he had. Yeah. We were working with really limited palette and a lot of stuff like that that was felt like knowledge that was rare that it wasn't easy to come by you know? yeah were your parents aware of let's say you went to Bali firm as well right mm -hmm. so you studied animation so you've had an artistic career mm -hmm. trajectory mm -hmm. it were they always aware step by step of process throughout that were you sharing the whole time or were they just like oh that's a lovely picture tom you know yeah, I guess they couldn't help but by us. I, I mean, I left home pretty young, I think yeah. 17. Yeah. And I guess they couldn't have helped but notice, you know, the the process because I was creating mess everywhere where I was trying to do yeah. make things and stuff like that. But no, they're not in any way uh, sophisticated in that way about art and stuff. You yeah, know, they're not yeah. from that background and mm -hmm. they don't have a hue, they don't have a hue. But true me, I guess they've learned more and more. But still, I do feel like 
they're a, it's a it's an everyman audience when they explain to my folks about it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Like my friend Ross, who co-directed Wolfwalkers yeah. with me, um, I remember meeting him as a kid, mm. and the difference between us, I felt, was like his mum was like a an amateur painter. You know, she painted for fun, and they had paints and all at home. Whereas my dad was an engineer, so he would encourage me by giving me a go of his rotaring pens or whatever he was yeah. using. I remember him having CAD in the 80s, oh, wow. early yeah. computer. And I was always fascinated by that, yeah. but he was always more on the work side. Well. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he was, art- yeah. probably, you know the way the different generations hmm. in Ireland, maybe dad would have been an artist if he'd grown up a couple of generations later. But at that time, I think, you know, the, the engineering was about the height of it. Yeah. Um, the rare person would have imagined that could be an artist but I was very lucky my parents always encouraged me they never said don't be an artist or anything yeah, like yeah. and be not to your face <laughs> yeah I'm sure they did well they knew I wasn't much good for much else <laughs> <laughs> oh it worked out which is a good thing you know in terms of life drawing then because I keep meaning to pick your brain about this but I'm so interested by everything else you said yeah. I, I kind of go and this is man tangent it at all yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, it would be about two minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The worst part. Cut before together, I, yeah. They were shit on the light or something. <laughs> yeah, and then give out a bunch of parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my parents are yeah. Yeah. white. They don't yeah. understand me. Yeah. 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 And as for those other studios that might possibly hire me, they're all crap. Wow, Jesus. Life drawing then. The, okay, so we've talked about this. You feel drawing is essential, is, is a great foundation of an approach. It's a language, yeah. It's a language, right. And do you feel it's a language of communicating ideas more effectively in this medium? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think it's an advantage. You don't have to be a good draft person to draw. Yeah. Everything is an advantage. If you're working in this medium and you're working with a lot of people who are drawing, if you can batch something up quickly to show them what you mean, yeah. it's better. And do you think it's better because it's like, the drawing is a, a, almost a finalized essence of the idea. When, let's say if I told you a story, mm. it's very it, oh, yeah. it, ephemeral. You can imagine who yeah. things out. Yeah. You think that's why it's more of an advantage? In the sense, of, in the sense of an illustration, yeah. what I'm interested by is the lovely, like we talked about Kagua, yeah. there's a lovely ability and Quentin Blake is a good example yeah. a certain illustrators have an ability to create something but not it's not like a fully rendered fantasy art photorealistic image of it it's kind of a suggestion of it that invites your imagination you know yeah. and that's what I like about drawing yeah. the incompleteness of it um, like mm-hmm. a very like power like and I was learning how to do it yeah. but it wouldn't be my choice a like, very realistic oil painting that's absolutely precise of what you have in your mind doesn't let give the viewer much scope it's a bit like live action it's yeah. like this is it you yes. know yeah, yeah, whereas yeah. what I've always been fascinated by by drawing is that it invites mm. imagination and yes. there's a lot of filling in yes. especially yeah. like black and white line drawing it invites a lot of filling in it's kind of fascinating how much we fill in yeah. and how small things can suggest depth or mm. you know it's an inter- and there's character in it there's a funny kind of there's the artist's character and there's what the artist sees of the person in front of them uh, their character yeah. you know I remember I had an awkward angle it happens in light drawing when you're drawn in the round and I just did well I don't know sorry I've never been okay yeah. well, if yeah. you're drawn in the round or yeah. even in the semicircle circle that we were in in Paris um, there was you know a dude obviously some kind of athlete or bodybuilder mm-hmm. fucking great shape yeah. and he's sitting there and I kind of got this like boring dead on his back you know just okay. his back that's yeah. all I had and I was like well I move around and I went no fucking can I draw that back not a back not fucking an anatomical but draw his back you know and try to get some of his character into it yeah. and that, that was like a challenge I set myself that it was more like a portrait than a life drawing you know yeah. that I was trying to show this person yeah you know, rather than just, and there was so, obviously something yeah. about me and that and like that's what's interesting about drawing it doesn't yeah. close off possibilities in the same way like photography or, or highly rendered CG stuff though yeah, I'd love that. You're right. There is there is like an opportunity in those lines to part of yourself in there. There's something concrete yeah. about it in that it's more than like words conjuring something up in your mind. So you're giving somebody a little bit more than words. Yeah. But you're not giving them as much as yeah, a full representation. So it's an interesting. Yeah. It's not a photograph saying this is what yeah. I want, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Like I animate, I always animate a character, even if it's voiced by George Clooney, isn't George Clooney. Well, you know, 
yeah. George Clooney when he's in a movie, no matter how good an actor he is or whatever, afterwards most people refer to him as George Clooney rather yeah. than the character's name. It's true, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas most people don't call the animated character the voice, they call the voice it the character's yeah. name. You know, because there's something that you mask or port yourself into whenever it's an animated character, I think. Yeah, to a degree, I would say. It depends on how... Again, you know, you watch something like Rango, you're yeah. aware that's Johnny Depp, you know. I also yeah, yeah, he had an influence on the performance. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that's why. I, but I, I definitely think of Rango as further removed from Johnny Depp than Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow, it, yes. It's funny, yeah. even if an actor fully embodies a role, you, you're aware you're looking at another human. Yes. And we're so evolutionary uh, tuned to looking at another human that even if we see a very rough representation of them, yes. we, we read into it, you know. Also, I think the way you've drawn is there's a lot of language in how you draw that I've been trying to explore. Yeah. There's an expressiveness to it. Yeah. And I know there's a really formal way, like red is anger and hard lines feel yeah. rigid and all that stuff. And we do all that. Shape language. Yeah, yeah, all of that. And and it, it's it's true and it works. And, and, and certainly in a Western context, a lot of those things are universal, like something cold might be blue and all yeah. of that stuff. There's another aspect to yeah. representation that's in how it's drawn, that yeah. you can feel if the artist was angry, how it can come across yeah. in yeah. the drawing, if an artist was feeling distant mm-hmm. to the person or warmth towards the person, even if they represented the person quite accurately, yeah. you can feel something in their choices that are almost subconscious. And that's something, in- it's interesting. And it'll be interesting to see how much people who aren't artists themselves feel that or value that. I'm not yeah. sure. Feel or value, that's a great mm-hmm. way of thinking about it. You're totally right, because it's, you know, and like anything, the more you do it, the more you're in tune with that certain thing. Like a mechanic with a car, mm. they can hear something mm. is off. Mm. Great. You're using your emotion as part of the drawing. You know, something that I'm sure a lot of younger people try to focus on is capturing their style and, you know, rendering these that images of things they're influenced by. Right? So it's often... If kids watch a lot of anime, they'll start replicating that style. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's their experience, you know? Whereas if you are letting go of the experience of capturing what you want in your head on paper and just flowing with the emotion trying to get there, it it totally changes the tone of the picture. Yeah, and even if it's not just, like, even if there is a certain amount of graft to it, Uh. you can't avoid the fact like I always think it's kind of ironic this mm-hmm. focus on style it's very commercial very it's very commercial. it's very capitalist and you see young people that are going I'm drawing this in Simpsons style and yeah. this cartoon as if there are these fixed Instagram filters that always did the same thing yeah. but actually a style is quite a fluid thing because mm-hmm. it's you yeah. it's something hard to define mm-hmm. there's something you and the stuff that my style is often my lowest common denominator like it's often stuff I struggle with defines my style you know what wow. I mean like my yeah, style yeah. is often st- defined by my limitations and mm-hmm. I'm always pushing against my limitations so my style naturally evolves my yeah. influences often stay the same yeah. but the style evolves yeah. and to say this is Disney style yeah. it's almost like a joke to me because 101 Dalmatians and Bambi totally different it, it's it? totally different yeah. and so this idea of finding your style I think you should just forget about that Yes, of and course. focus on improving your limitations and your style will take care of itself Yeah. and the other thing is like you know these Pinterest boards of all your inspirations that is a little bit like the back to the AI again that training model thing and we all I, I remember coming across them and realising I'd been doing it informally with yeah. like the books I prefer the art yeah. I prefer to know but I think to be a little less conscious mm-hmm. of taking it the way he draws hands and the way she draws eyes and you know and be less conscious of that and allowing that stuff to influence you but then not think about it too much your style will be much more authentic yeah. and some kind of mashup of all your favourite things and mm-hmm. I don't know. There's a weird self-consciousness amongst young people. And I think it's, there's an identity thing when you're young. You want yes, to be seen yeah. as an uh, individual. Yeah. And you either fall under a mentor and go, I want to draw just like this amazing person. Yeah. Or you kind of say, oh, I'm going to be known as a complete innovator. Yeah. I think there are a bit of dead ends, you know. I understand that, you know, at that age, we're starting to come into society alone. If I think back on who I was when I was 20, 25, it's not anywhere near the person I am now. You know, I really had no idea who I was until I was 25 onwards. Mm-hmm. I was just a mash of other people's mm-hmm. opinions. And there's not, and that's fine to acknowledge that. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. You just, like everything, it just takes time. You're just this soup. 
and slowly, you know, it reduces down and the nice flavors come out. One of the things I think is saddest in artists is you see that they hit a certain success and then they start doing again what people praise them for. Yeah. Then they become like a copy of themselves. Yes. And then they start to degenerate, which is even worse. They start to kind of start breaking apart again. Yeah. And that's something I'm always really conscious of. <laughs> As a shoulder. Well, I mean, it's funny talking about style. Like people always impart cartoon saloon style because no of your triptych. Yeah. yeah, and there's no getting around the fact that we're quite conscious and talk a lot about it here in the studio. Really? How yeah. much are funders coming to us for what we've done before compared yeah. to what we want to do in the future? Yeah, yeah. And what's the healthy balance? And and even in even in a kind of commercial way, it's like, what do you? Own, like when you own your style like is your visual language because oh, each one wow. each what one great question. Question. Yeah, yeah like well each one should be um like there's no doubt that i'm influenced by richard williams and miyazaki and gustav Klimt and all yeah. these people yeah um but what i have done with my collaborators and all the students does have a consistency yeah. through it but also an evolution like the wolf walkers is clearly an evolution from secret accounts it's the same sort of thought process yeah. Yeah. i probably won't completely make a break it, like anything i do will be a continuation of it yeah but how do you protect that how do you offer that yeah. how can you sell that how yeah. do you stop it that your team who you've trained for like four years to work in your style of course they're going to go off and have some of that in there yeah, yeah, if they yeah. go and work somewhere else so yeah. it's a really odd question you know it's a kind of convoluted one it's interesting because for one through line I've noticed that's talking about um, collaborators. They'll affect you, right? Mm. So, you know, the last time we talked, we were talking about Adrian. Oh, yeah. And he's the art director on Sign of the Sea, and yet Old Fangs or Genius Loki, mm. you can see him in sure. Sign of the Sea. Oh, totally. yeah. And you see that pull through the, yeah, into his sort yeah. of work. And in that sense, you know, I look at Wolf Walkers, I look at Song of the Sea, and of course the artistic direction is similar, but my God, there is such a, yeah, a void of difference. Change. Yeah, very clear change. And is it then the idea of, are your collaborators then the anchor of change? In the direction so for me, a lot of the time, yeah, you yeah. look towards the wild cards. I always say that, you look towards the people that plays draw a circle, they draw a square. Yeah, yeah, I said that before. You know, people say that. And I like that. I like yeah. that challenge you know, yeah. in collaborators, for sure. Do uh, you think it's easier to... So, life drawing is a very open forum when you're doing it. But it's also a very internal process that you're going through. Um, whereas a lot of animation is a totally collaborative process. Yeah. So, you know, I know they're on two different spectrums to some degree, but... Let's talk about it, drawing in terms of collaboration. How do you approach that? That's interesting, yeah. yeah. And most of the imagery that will be associated with a tambour style is actually a collaboration of a lot of talented people. Yeah. And there's very little that ends up on screen, almost nothing that's just me. Yeah, that's an interesting question too. I suppose art, I, I think about some of my animation heroes like Dick Williams or Glenn Keane. They always swore by life drawing, so I just sort of yeah. absorbed that like yeah. mother's milk. I was just like, yeah, that's what you do, you know, <laughs> like life drawing. It's a good question. Um, I think life drawing for me, even in college, yeah. or Venables was my teacher, and it was like a day a week where we kind of got to be individual artists, yeah. like a, a, an artist, like, you know, who signs the picture, the, you know, that kind of an artist. <laughs> and then the rest of the time we were being trained to be, you yeah. know, good in between or Sir Don Bluth or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really materialized well yeah but yeah it's an issue. I don't know really and and I don't collab I don't draw collaboratively yeah. I think what I do is we create collaboratively so we all draw yeah and then we we bring it together and very often I might focus say on characters and overall layout and composition yeah. and rely a lot on someone like Adrian or Ross to sort of build out the rest of the world yeah and that's that's very um I love that I love working that way I love yeah. that process but there's always a little meh part to me that would like to be able to do it all. So, you know, you like to think that you could do it, but you're choosing not to. Yeah, yeah. Rather than I'm just not able to do this and you do it for me. You know? <laughs> yeah. you know, drawing is an individual thing, really, if we boil it down to it. But we know that creating any form of video, anything like that, it, it's generally collaborative. I did this great panel discussion for and at Los Angeles, I don't know, whatever animation film festivals out there. Mm -hmm. And it's about filmmakers who make animated films. 
by themselves. There's the guys who made The Spine of Night, you know, mm. this incredible film, Morgan and, and Philip, and although they had a very small team. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's all either small teams or individual people. Adrian's like that. Like a lot of what Adrian has yeah. done with the shorts they've done are really um, like an artist, like a painter painting. You know, like it's very yeah. one artist, Jen. But it, the, what we learned from that discussion is that it's almost impossible to make an animated film totally by yourself. Yeah. It is, it is literally almost impossible because even to the degree of if you're giving yourself the time to do it, what's paying your bills, you know, what's doing that. Do you have a supportive partner there that's oh, yeah. taking part of the load? And that all that factors in. But it's interesting to me that then the drawing side of it is a totally individual mm. thing. But yet, when we're talking about making an animated feature, mm. it, it need to be collaborative for it to yeah. work. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and there's people that have made animated, like a friend of mine, Elliot Cohen, who made a, a feature film mm. pretty much on his own. But as you say, he was teaching and mm. wasn't completely on his own. He was a musician. Was an exactly. Movie. Yeah. Practical advice for people who are doing life drawing. Tell me practical advice. Um, yeah. yeah. Gosh, how would I say it? Um, I learned some new techniques. Okay. In the travel side, yeah. there weren't the way I no. uh, approached it. Yeah, like Raymond thought a way that was kind of smoky, which was interesting. Seeing, smoky. yeah, seeing beginners put down kind of a cloud of the area that the figure is occupying. Yeah, and then going back and refining and using an eraser and stuff to kind of build it up. Yeah. I thought it was a very interesting, very painterly way to draw. Like a subtractive process. Yeah, yeah. it's a very painterly way to draw. Mm. But I mean, there's a book called The Natural Way to Draw by Kim and Nicolodes. Okay. That was hugely influential for me. And that was yeah. just about learning gesture drawing, learning blind drawing. There's a lot of basic exercises that you can do. Yeah. It takes the pressure off making a perfect image. Yeah. And you kind of train yourself with silhouette. Like, there was another thing I learned in Paris, which was we had just a bit of white paint and a, and a colored uh you know like a gray um page and we had a really strong light on the model and we just painted the light not the model you know we were just painting where the light hit the model great you know so yeah. some of those little tricks i learned in the meantime but yeah. my the original stuff mm -hmm. that i built my practice on and that i loved learning in body firm that was the natural way to draw kind of stuff where yeah. it's just do a lot like really get the cheapest newsprint you can and, and, and cheap charcoal and be non-precious yeah. and just draw a lot of gestures and look at the movement, not the individual parts. You know, then do blind drawing for close looking, which is not looking at the page at all. And you make this squiggle like you, yeah. but you're really training your eye to look hard. Yeah. And then all the good old measuring and all like that is always there for you to come back to. But usually people have learned that in high school or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's a lot of unlearning, yeah. you know. That's a great question as well is and age a barrier for people to learn drawing no. in, in a commercial sense in a commercial sense thankfully no i mean there's yeah. definitely people in their like middle age transitioning into animation yeah. and from even in totally non-similar fields then also a lot of the people in the classes i was taking in europe were retirees yeah. who had been sort of hobby painters and now were taking it seriously yeah. i would say the main barrier to doing really good work is there's a certain energy mm -hmm. when you're young and trying to prove yourself yeah. that you eat, sleep and breathe it. Yeah. And as you get older, you have other responsibilities. So I could see that the disadvantage some of them had wasn't their ability, yeah. but just the time they had to put into it. Or, okay. But maybe they were doing it because they were just enjoying the process. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's no, no, there's no like end goal of I want a career in this. They just, I'm yeah. just going yeah. to yeah. enjoy it. And that's kind of beautiful too. Yeah. No, I would say there's no age limit, which is one of Great. the yeah. few pursuits in life that I think you can start from nothing and become incredibly proficient mm -hmm. in a relatively short amount of time at any point in your life if you're willing to give it the hours. Yeah, no. at least I hope so. No, no, <laughs> yeah. it's for sure. No, like, that's the for sure. That's the for sure. It's not like being a ballerina or <laughs> footballer or something. Yeah. I mean, I still want to dance. You know, I dance it. Oh, you can dance. Yeah, you know, not gonna be <laughs> not gonna be prima ballerina. <laughs> yeah, and um, I don't have any more questions. Do you have any any thoughts or anything you want to share? Oh no, I think you're yeah. pretty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, don't talk too much. Yeah, I right, talk too much already. Well, if you've got something in there that you can cut down to two minutes, that's strange. Yeah, I've got loads. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut down to two minutes. Hello, Cole. Hi, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Off I go. Back in the car, yeah. 
And no, thank you so much. Do you send it to me when you're ready with it? Yeah, of course.